This is the third part of our video series. In this case, we're going to take a look into controllers and see how we can build business rules that are going to be based on the models that we created earlier. So the controllers are the basic logic of your project. So let's go in here and let's take a look at the basic uh, functions that were created for us. Uh, there are a few important properties, just like models, an agreement, in a controller, sorry, in this case called agreement, is a class that has functions inside of it, but it also inherits this convector controller. So in this case, we define these functions like this, and we need to include this invocable property. If a function is, does not have this invocable, then it's not going to be accessible from the outside. For example, when somebody is sending a an, an transaction to the blockchain. Also, we define this decorator that is going to set, say that this agreement controller, this class, is our controller and the keyword for this one is agreement. Um, so let's take a look at this create uh, function. So for example, in this case, we have this param agreement. So we're receiving a whole object with all the information we defined in the model and we're going to save it just like this. So what, what, what's going to be the behavior of this? We will receive this model. It's going to automatically validate all of these decorators. And if everything is fine, when it goes to the save function, it will create a new registry in our blockchain and insert this new this uh, document this this model that we are creating so for example if the title is not included it won't create this property as well with the rest of the properties that we saw before so it is as you can see using this data type that it's called agreement it's from our previous model it's it, it, it includes this default prop, this default function that is called save. So this comes from the convector model. At the end, behind the scenes, it is going to the fabric stop and it's going to do a lot of things like serialization and deserialization. As well, it's going to try to save this to the blockchain. Remember that this code, this controller, is going to be run inside of a container that is linked to a node or to a peer. And then it is through this uh, low level communication going to change the ledger. So we can add this one, but we can also add another property, uh, another function, sorry. In this case, we're going to add one that is going to return us the status of the agreement. So let's call this, what is the status? In this case, we don't really need the whole agreement to make a query. So what we can do is to ask for a different property. In this case, we just want the ID. In this case, it's of type string. It is here when our business logic actually gets into place. And let's add this in here and import job. A uh, job is a library that we usually use to validate data types. It makes things a lot easier. Uh, so in this part, uh, what we need to do is to query one specific agreement based on this ID. So let's do agreement dot get one. And just like this, we can get the agreement. So let's do a const. Let's call this agreement and await this function. So it needs the ID and it's going to go to the fabric stop. It's going to retrieve the property for us and it's going to set it on this part. So what we can do in here, as I was telling you before, is to uh, actually get into the business logic. So we can do something like agreement that and we can check uh, if, if both parties uh, agreed. So for example, we can do something like if agree part is true and Agree party two is also true. We can return uh, data in, uh, in this case. I'm going to return uh, this this text that it's going to tell me that it's agreed by, by both parties. So 
let's call this a grid but if in for some reason either of these parties didn't actually uh, agree on the uh, on the terms it's going to return something that says not agreed so i'm going to include one last function in this case i'm going to create another invocable function and what i want of this one is just to be called signed uh, so what i need from the business perspective is that somebody says for this specific agreement i want to sign this and I want to tell whether I agree or not with what is defined in the text. So we need a new property that it's going to be validated as a boolean and it's going to be called response type boolean. So in this case what we need to do is first check who is sending the transaction. You know in a blockchain multiple parties participate in the same ledger with the same rules and anybody can try to create or to change something in your data inside of a smart contract so you need to blind the source code with the logic that actually validates that the people that is sending the transaction is allowed to make that task so in this case uh, with convector we have this that is called the sender the sender is the fingerprint of the certificate that is sending this transaction so for example what I can do in here I'm going to do this really manually but you can do this in a more complex and sophisticated way so for example if you do if in this case we first need to get the agreement that we are querying and we're going to say if agreement that agreed party equals sender So we can, in this case, come in here and check if this is an allowed party. In this case, actually, this should be a uh, party one because we are not checking the answer. We are checking the certificate of the participant. So this is, again, an internal property. It automatically extracts the fingerprint of the certificate sending the transaction. And in this case, this should have been set by the initial uh, participant so if this actually uh, match that user that is sending this transaction can update the status of the agreement so for example we can do something like agreement that agreed party and we can put the answer in this case it's called response as when we as well we can duplicate this for party two so we can do something like this and what it is simply telling the, uh, the, the code is that if this transaction was sent by either of these parties, then update their response. Otherwise, they will get an exception. So we can just come in here and do agreement that save, just like we did before, and there you go. In this case, we just created two functions. The first one is what is the status, and it's going to tell us if everybody uh, agree or if there is somebody that is hasn't agreed yet or actually rejected the transaction and uh, also we are setting one uh, function that is going to be called signed and it's going to allow just the strictly the, the strict participant that we need in here to do this